we've been doing some pretty hard hitting teachings on just the reality of how when you're reading this that it challenges you you know to kind of look at it from a different perspective to identify those things that are in ourselves as opposed to those things that are in other people because it's easy to point the finger or to look at someone else and say oh well I could see how they need to hear that or they need to do something about who they are but you see Tozer takes the reality of our understanding and applies it to ourselves he says that you should be looking at yourself as opposed to looking at others because it's easy to point the finger it's easy to blame someone but it's quite another thing when you actually take the time to look in the mirror and decide for yourself what you need to change about yourself and that's kind of why we use Tozer we use it as a foundation in order to teach ourselves the way we should go because it's easy to look at the world and say hey you know I ought to check that out you know and kind of look at that and go ooh that looks good you know I think I'll go over there and check that out for a while or we kind of look over there and go yeah you know I kind of like that you know I think that's got a good thing going so kind of move our way over that way but you know the bottom line is when you start looking at yourself and you start examining what you've done with your life then you suddenly don't look so good in the mirror because you start thinking what have I done with my life have I squandered it to the left or the right or have I done the things that Jesus said to do and that's what Tozer does for us is that he reminds us to take stock of ourselves to look at where we're coming from so that we understand where we're going because God wants to take us a little farther along the way than where we are today and he wants to bring us to a place of understanding of where he wants us to go because every person should study for themselves to be approved unto God a workman that need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth but likewise every person has an individual relationship with God a personal relationship something that the Holy Spirit does inside of you that helps you to hear a little better you know to see a little closer to understand a little more intimately that which applies to yourself because whenever you're trying to point at someone else and supposedly use some gift of the Spirit then you're always winding up having to explain it or tell people more about it than they want to know they really don't want to know because they're more concerned about what their life is about than they are about what someone else's life is doing so a lot of times it's easy to kind of you know vicariously which means participate in getting you know into the crowd or the mob and kind of looking at the other guy you know and saying ah, look at them man they're doing that you know Ugh. but in part when we do that we're actually crucifying the Lord we're actually participating in the masses that Jesus said he died for because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life and if we're doing our job right if we're living like God wants us to then God is saving the world and that's what we're called to do that's our responsibility so in Tozer God is glorified in our moral victories for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace Romans 8 6 in the Pauline epistles the gravitational pull of the heart in one direction or another is called the mind in the eighth chapter of Romans for instance when Paul refers to the mind he's referring to the sum of our dominant desires what is pulling you what has got your attention what are you focused in on what are you zeroing in on in other words what has got your passion what do you get excited about what do you get wrapped up in what are you really pretty much kind of like talking the most about the mere intellect then is not the mind the mind is intellect plus an emotional tug strong enough to determine action see when you are willing to do something about it when you go beyond just thinking about it then that's kind of what Tozer is talking about when you take that simple idea and then make an action like posting something or you see something that says oh they did this or they did that and then you go and tell someone else about that you're not supposedly gossiping as some people say because then they say well you're just presenting someone else's opinion no you're not you're actually participating in sin you're actually agreeing with what's being said and putting your stamp of approval on it with your name 
by posting it, by saying it, by participating in it, by passing it along in any way, shape, or form. Because even indulging in it, Jesus said, is sin. As Christians, our only safety lies in complete honesty. The fact that we've done it and admit we're a sinner. Because you see, there's nobody that's going to be perfect or righteous or holy. None of them. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. No matter what you do, you are going to sin. You will fail in some way. But because the standard is perfection, you are constantly striving to achieve that because God is working with you, in you, to accomplish his purposes so that in your imperfection, you could be perfect for what he wants to accomplish to share with someone that comfort and that encouragement that you yourself have received so that way you would be perfect in God's will even though you're imperfect in his sight. Meaning that he sees your flaws but he's taking care of that in looking at Jesus and his redemption that he's purchased for you by way of causing the price for your sin to be paid for. And we call that atonement. We must surrender our hearts to God so that we have no unholy desires. Then let the scriptures pronounce their judgment on a contemplated course. If we're not unrighteous in what we're looking at, then let the scriptures tell us. If we're right in what we're doing, then let the scriptures reveal it. Because you see, the Holy Spirit will convict you or convince you of your righteous way of looking at it or your impropriety of what you put in your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So a lot of times you could just simply look at what you've been saying, look at what you've been doing, and you know where your heart's at. If the scriptures condemn an object, we must accept that judgment and conform to it, no matter how we may at the moment feel about it. Oh, I'm not pointing fingers. I'm not, you know, accusing people. I'm not, you know, like getting involved in lust. No, it's okay to go look as long as I don't touch. No, that's not what Jesus said. To bring our desires to the cross and allow them to be nailed there with Christ is a good and beautiful thing. We will spend the rest of our life taking up our cross and carrying it so that we can put it in the ground right where we're at at some moment in time throughout your day and crawl back up on that sucker and nail your hide to the wall because that's what the reality of living like Jesus is. We are carrying our cross because we are sinful. Now walking in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. But if we don't walk in the spirit, then we need to carry that cross because we need to make our flesh so weak and kill it so that our spirit could survive and the Holy Spirit would allow us to be alive unto Him rather than indulging in our flesh. To be tempted and yet to glorify God in the midst of it is to honor Him where it counts. You just go, praise the Lord, you know. That's, yeah, a beautiful woman, but I'm not interested. I'm sorry. You know, I have a higher calling. And though that may be tempting to me, I am not going to indulge myself because I refuse to get involved in even thinking the thoughts. But I bring every thought into captivity of Christ, which is our reasonable service, which is what we are ought to do, and we would never give in to those things that would cause us to sin, whether in thought, in deed, in action, or word. This is more pleasing to God than any amount of sheltered and untempted piety could ever be. It's easy to remove yourself and hide away. But standing in the midst of sinners who are condemning someone and then saying, no, that's wrong, that's right. You see, when you won't participate in what everybody's doing because they're doing it, and you'll stand up for what is right because God said he loves the person and he wants righteousness for the person, he wants to save the person from hell, then you're doing what Jesus said. Because the mobs would have stoned and killed the woman caught in adultery. She was sinful. She had committed sin. They knew it. And yet Jesus said, hey, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. Because who were the accusers? Those who had sin in their own life, as well as we do. So should we accuse our brother? Should we accuse anyone? Should we accuse sinners? Be careful. What did Jesus do with the woman? God is always glorified when he wins a moral victory over us. And we are always benefited immeasurably and gloriously benefited. God will bless us enormously when we choose to do the right thing. That's what righteousness means. Choosing to do the right thing. 
looking at somebody like, say, I don't know, the President of the United States and saying, no, he's not a Muslim, or looking at somebody like Rick Warren and saying, no, he's not whatever they call him, you know, he's not. Ask him. You know, find out the facts. Prove it to yourself. Make a real powerful, dynamic search with the Holy Spirit and with you and God alone to find out the truth. I did. I spent three years, well, I spent, I spent one year just researching all the material that people were accusing Rick of. Then I spent another year proving it wrong. It's ridiculous. The stupidity of what people say about a man of God who is st still a man of God, that if you choose to meet him and talk to him, you'll figure out, wow, he's a man of God. Duh. Hello. Guess what? You can ask God today and get it over simply. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who braided thump and give to all men liberally. God would rather we do not speak out, shoot off our mouth, bad mouth, accuse, falsely accuse, false witness, bear false witness, and do all kinds of things that are sin against our brothers, of all things, when we ought to be proving to ourselves before we open our mouth what we should be saying and doing. It's so easy to click. And it's so easy to sin. But how hard is it to stand up for righteousness sake? For theirs is the kingdom of God. And that's what we're here for. We teach, preach, share Jesus. For the reality is, the world will crucify us. It will. It will not like, not want, and it will come against every step of the way that you choose to be morally right with God. Because it's easy right now in the world. Most Christians I know have a unethical, immoral attitude about what they can do on social media. They can just go ahead and do whatever they want to. They can say what they want. They can think what they want. They can post what they want. They just slaughter people with their mouth. They have committed machine gun messages where they just shoot off the first thing in their mind. State it. What else, what else is out there, you know, and just act like Satan himself, accusing the brethren, doing this, doing that, acting this, acting that. And you want to say, are you a Christian? Do you share Jesus at any point in time? Are you full of love? Have you talked about what you and Jesus are doing today? Have you shared what your personal experience is? Have you found that God is real and you are telling other people he's real? I discovered it or I saw a miracle or I enjoyed, guess what? Talking to God and he really did speak. I heard it. Or did you share what you learned today from the word of God that you're studying and supposed to be reading? devotionals that you're supposed to be knowing? Are you taking the time, really, to be alone with God? Or are you spending the time always in the world and its ways? Tozer doesn't want you to. Neither does Jesus. Jesus said, come away with me. Spend time with me. Know me. Share me. Live with me. Love me. Be with me. I am your God. He spoke to the Christians and he said, look, I'm not talking to the unrighteous. I'm not talking to the sinner. I'm talking to you. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. It wasn't written to non-Christians. It was written to Christians. It's written to us today. Would you open the door today? The blood of Christ will cleanse not only actual sins, but the very inward desire so that we will not want to sin. A blessed state indeed, and blessed are they that reach it. you got to want it. You know, you got to keep asking God to forgive you, but you got to want it. you got to want Jesus. I don't even want to give up, you know, like whatever your lust is, or your pride, or your ego, or your money, or your you know, car, or your whatever it is that you've gotten yourself entangled in. God can take care of that. That's the easy part. The hard part is, what do you want? What do you really want? Will you be honest and truthful today, right now, as you're sitting here listening to this teaching, as you're considering in your heart yourself, as I'm considering myself, what do I want from God? Take the whole world. Give me Jesus. God, take away anything that blocks me from Jesus. God, remove ministry, remove people, remove my wife, remove children, remove anything that there is anywhere at all. But give me Jesus. Is that your prayer? Is it? It better be. You see, the world will give you itself. And it will deny Jesus every time. 